Hey, what's up guys? My name is Moda and welcome back to the Mining Stacker YouTube channel. So today's video is going to be taking a deep dive into that new Bitmain at miner, the Dash miner, the D9. So we're going to go look at hash rates, look at what the hash rate may look like in a few months, look at profitability, look at the comparisons, compare it to the competition, and an overall review, right? So we're going to see if this thing is actually going to be worthwhile or if it's one we can pretty much forget about, right? So if that sounds interesting, guys, stay tuned, all right? So let's get to it. So in case you're unfamiliar, back in February, AntMiner released this guy, right? The AntMiner D9. So the stats are coming in at 1,770 770 giga hash or 1.77 terahash, 2,839 watts, right? So overall impressive. Kind of a surprising drop though, just because the previous model, it's only been about a year and a half, right? Typically the cycle is two to three years, but after only a year and a half, for whatever reason, they decided to release it. The biggest thing with this one though is the price. So $8,500, especially in comparison to everything else, right? Comparing it to like the KA3, the K7, have been in that four to five thousand dollar range at least the msrp obviously resells a little different story and especially in comparison to like when the z9 pro came out at 12.99 right so we've been seeing this trend of cheaper miners so when we saw the price of this guy coming at eighty five hundred dollars it was kind of like oh kind of playing the market a little bit seems like almost they're trying to get a, a feel for it to see if they can get away with it right so we're going to go into Reasons why it's not working in their favor here in a little bit, right? So those are the stats. Now let's compare it to the previous model, right? So again, we're talking about the D7. One other interesting fact with this one is that in reality, there is no competition, right? For as far as recent releases go, it is pretty much the two Bitmain miners, okay? The other most recent release is from Strong, this was in November 2019, something that's completely irrelevant. So wouldn't even factor that in. And it, it's just been bit me, right? So the previous release was October 21, and now this guy. So just quickly glancing at the stats, decent increase, right? Nothing crazy like what we saw with the gold shell to bit main thing where it was like a 3x type thing. In this case, it's about a 50% increase in the hash rate and about 10% less watts, right? So definitely a decent upgrade, but again, it's Bitmain to Bitmain. It's not, you know, Gold Shell or Ivy Link to Bitmain. It's literally just them right now. So again, it is kind of curious with the the timing of this guy. I don't know if maybe they got word that somebody else was trying to release one and they just dropped this one to like shut them up. No idea, but they did release it. It is here. And again, this price point is the drawback though, right? And we're going to go into reasons why here in a bit. So let's look at the hash rate. So initially when this guy came out, I was like, ah, this, the hash rate shouldn't get affected that much because Dash has been around for so long. They started way back in 2014. So I figured, okay, you know, their network should be fairly mature. But looking at it, it's not what I was expecting. Okay, I was expecting to see a lot more hash, but that's not the case. Okay, so the current hash rate, which is kind of tricky. I mean, you can kind of tell by looking at the chart, these freaking spikes. Okay, and it's not just them going to like other websites and looking at the hash rate. It's a similar kind of thing. So at least here on Pool Bay, though, they do have like an average here, right? So you can see here the average is right in the middle. So most recently, though, this past week or so, you can see there is a slight uptick. Okay, it was averaging at that 2.64. And ultimately, it's at 2.87. So there is enough trend, and it's most likely because people are starting to plug theirs in. Okay, I'm assuming that some of the shipments are starting to come out, and we can expect this to increase quite a bit, right? So the hash rate overall, again, it's kind of tricky to say, but most places have it pegged at about three petahash, okay? And that is just about in line with the average here, okay? So even going on like mining pool stats, we can see... Overall, they have it listed at three, so that's what we're gonna go by. We're gonna go as it being three petahash, right? Um, if we look at profitability, and I think that's actually what's been going on with the profitability. 
I don't know if you guys caught that stream yesterday and even today. I was refreshing quite a few times and it's been bouncing between $13 and $9 and I think it's because of the hash rate. I think it's taking the difficulty into account in real time and that's what's causing that fluctuation. Um, so currently it's at $13 a day. This is at a 10 cent kilowatt hour and the D7 still chugging along, making almost seven bucks a day. And the reason this one kind of was on most people's radar is because it's been fairly profitable this entire time. Okay, even going back during these downtrends, all this thing, it was one that's been very consistent, right? So that was something interesting. You know, a lot of people were asking about the D7 prior to this guy getting announced. And when this guy got announced, got some good news. Um, but again, the downfall is that price, right? So let's look at Dash as a whole. This is where it gets a little concerning for me, mainly because when we look at the all-time charts, right? Again, Dash has been around since 2014, so almost 10 years now, nine years going at it right now. What's concerning is as far as the, the highs for this last go-around, right? This last bull market, it peaked at $443 back in May, but again, we did have that kind of double top so on that second peak, it only hit 236, right? So that is a little concerning, especially considering the previous all-time high back in 2017 hit, what, like 1283, right? So about 1300 bucks. So quite a drastic difference. Didn't get anywhere near that previous all-time high. And again, on this other double top, it didn't even get close to what it did previously, right? It hit 443. Down to what, 250, 236, 270. So, not necessarily half, but to me, that's not a good sign, right? Especially if we're using history, especially comparing it to, like, for example, CKB, which pretty much stayed with Bitcoin, you know, the whole time. So, that is something to take note of. Um, so, yeah, overall, not looking too hot there. One other thing to factor in, if you are thinking of getting one, Dash does have, they have it listed as a having. It's not a having, though. It's their block reward reduction. So with, the way theirs works, it's about a 7% drop every year. Okay, so their next one coming up will be in about three months. So expect your rewards to go down about 7% if it's something you're interested in, in getting. Okay, so now let's look at what it will look like when these guys come onto the network. Okay. So again, we came to the consensus that the overall hash rate currently is about three petahash, right? So let's open up a calculator and start doing some calculations, right? So we do have some data now though. So when the K3 and the K7 came out, we were projecting, you know, the 2000 units. And so far that's been about what's happened, right? It's not fully accurate though because all the shipments haven't came out yet. They're not fully online, so we really don't know the full extent of it. But I'm gonna do the calculations based off of that same number, just in case they do decide to release that amount. Okay. Hopefully it's less, right? But we're gonna go more of a worst case scenario. In reality, it's not a worst case scenario. Actually, I would probably consider it a likely scenario. Okay. Again, hopefully it's less but we're gonna calculate it at that, just because we do have a little bit of precedent here. So we do know that this guy is at 1.77 terahash, right? We're gonna times that by 2000, okay? Because we're, we're putting in the estimation that there's gonna be about 2000 units, right? That's gonna give us a grand total of 3,540 terahash, okay? When we convert that to petahash, okay, we're gonna just divide by a thousand, okay? So instead of it being 3,500, it's gonna go down to 3.5, okay? Which is fairly close to the current hash rate, okay? We're coming to the consensus that it's about three petahash. We're gonna be about 3.5 petahash if we get the 2,000 units, okay? Meaning that it's going to double meaning that those rewards are gonna get cut in half, okay? That's also if all the existing hash rate stays on, okay? So pretty much if all the D7 stay on. 
If they decide to come off, then pretty much what is currently there will stay there, meaning that we're going to stay in that three petahash range. Okay? So a lot of this is also going to have to do with the price action. Okay? If we stay sideways, if we stay in this range, chances are those D7s won't be profitable and they most likely will unplug. Okay? But if we do get some bullish action, say the price doubles and it gets to the point where those guys are profitable, they're going to be plugging back in. Okay, so there's a lot of variables to consider. We're just going to treat it as though we're going to add this onto the existing hash rate. Okay, we're going to do it based off of that. So if we open up a calculator, right? Again, I like to use CryptoCal because it's easy. We can also use Mind the ASIC. Click on that, divide, find the reward. Again, hopefully one day they will actually just put the amount of yield. That's been my one complaint with the website. They do put it down here, but it's after the electrical has been taken out. Ideally, it would be nice if it was just here. That way we don't have to do these other steps. So in the meantime, we use CryptoCalc. It is fairly accurate. I double checked it with the numbers on Mind the ASIC. Again, Mind the ASIC has been jumping around. Again, right now it's at 14 bucks. The, the median point has been about $12 for today. Okay, and when we did the little calculator here, came out to about $12.69, right? So give or take, it's about there. Again, at the time when I did this, it was 60 bucks. It's currently gone down a bit, it's down to 54, okay? So also factor that in. Um, so again, we put in our stats, which here it's in gigahash, so 1,770, 2039, 10 cent kilowatt hour. And again, our yield, which is again, what we wanna focus on is 0.32, okay? So this is what you would get. This is what we want to focus on. Okay. So now if that number comes to fruition, meaning those 2000 get units get shipped and it doubles and everybody stays on the network, then our rewards will get cut in half. Okay. So instead of getting this 0.32, we would go down to 0.16. Okay. So now what we can do is we can take the price of dash which will just use, well, we might as well use the current price, right? So current price is about 54 bucks, so 54.43. So 54.43, and we're gonna multiply it by that 0.16, okay? So that's gonna give us $8.70, okay? So if that does come into play, this will be our fiat value. Okay, and this is the overall. This is not taking into account your electric. Okay, so when we go back over here, we see the electric is $6.81. And again, just quick math, it'll bring you down to like a $2 profit. Okay, so that is if that hash rate does indeed double. Okay, but also keep in mind, if the price action stays where it's at, a lot of the D7 guys will be unplugging. Okay. But again, I like to look at it in the worst case scenario. And this would be what I would base everything off of, right? So again, a lot of factors. We don't know if 2,000 units are going to get shipped. It's just a projection, okay? But basing it off of the KE3 and the K7 numbers, that's what it was. But also keep in mind that, for example, the HS3, they literally only released in the hundreds, Okay, a lot of, we're not going to find out until this other shipment actually releases and gets plugged in how many units are in total, but not that many. So it's possible that that happens here as well, especially the fact that this guy doesn't seem like it's selling too well. Okay, so the MSRP was 8500 bucks when it came out. This is what they were selling at, but resale has already started going down. So even from bigger vendors, for example, on BT Miners, the current batch is at $86.99, which is typically quite low considering that this is $8,500. Typically, they're like 20% higher than whatever the MSRP is, right? So that's already lower there. And then we go to the April batch and we can see an even lower number. This is what's interesting, okay? It is below that number at $76.99. And then even more credence to this is that just today, we got another price sheet. And no affiliation with these guys, wouldn't use them, but I just use them for price comparisons, okay? Their most recent, which is today, they have it listed at 6,900, 
Okay, so expect this price to continue to go down because again, it's not selling as well, right? And it's again, it's, it's that price point, okay? Especially in comparison to the K3, the K7 is just too high, right? So again, those factors, you know, the price action affects it, the MSRP affects it, but at the end of the day, if, you know, the profitability doesn't make sense, we also affect it, right? If retail's not buying them, then they got to lower the price, right? It's a whole supply and demand thing. If there's no demand, then they got to lower the price to get it to figure out, to balance out, right? And it seems like everybody's kind of playing price discovery. I think this recent pump kind of affected things, right? So we're seeing it here. Another example I've been chatting with you guys about it was with that E9 Pro, right? That thing's been bouncing all over the place. The MSRP was $12.99. People were reselling for $8,000, the $7,000, the $5,000, now this group buy they're trying to get it down to 2500 and even like these guys have it down to 2800 okay so this price action continues i expect these prices to go lower right until they find that sweet spot where demand is coming in and i think the e9 pro realistically i want it down in like the 2200 2000 dollar range but realistically this is not a bad price and i expect it to sell in that 2500 dollar range right so hopefully it does go lower, but it's honestly, it's a decent price, right? Um, something to keep in mind, not financial advice, just my opinion, what I'm looking at, right? These are things I take into consideration and what I look at. So overall, basing off the profitability, what it looks like, you know, if it might go down to that $2 a day range, or it can, again, it can stay where it's at if the existing hash unplugs. Right? If the existing hash unplugs, then it'll actually stay at the same range of where we're at right now. right? Because again, it's literally doubling. Again, that's also if the 2,000 units get shipped. It's also possible that only 1,000 come out, especially because this guy isn't as popular. The fact that these prices are coming down already is showing that the demand isn't there. It's most likely because of the price. I don't think it's necessarily because, because of the project itself or the miner. It's just the price. It is way too expensive, at least in its current state. Right? We go down to 5,000, then maybe. But realistically, basing it off of these numbers and the fact that looking at the previous price action, to me, not looking too great. Even if it goes down like to the $5,000 range, I know I kind of mentioned that in the other video, but taking that deeper dive into it, because essentially what it is, if you haven't looked into it, they want to be the like the digital cash. Right. So they're trying to be like, you know, fast transactions, cheap transactions. To me, though, they're not differentiating themselves enough from other projects. Yes, it's fast. Yes, it's cheap. So are all a lot of these other projects. Right. And the fact that they didn't have this, you know, much price action because it's similar to like Litecoin. Right. It's actually a fork of Litecoin, which is a fork of Bitcoin, oddly enough. But um. At least Litecoin has more potential, especially with the whole merge mining aspect with Doge and everything. Um, it seems like they are making traction in like Latin and South America. So certain countries, maybe they'll, they'll do well there. Um, they do have like a masternode system. So their, rate, their rewards work. It's 45% for the miners, 45% for the masternodes, and then 10% for the, for the community. But overall... I'm not too bullish on the project, not too bullish on the prospects. So realistically, for me to even really consider it, for me personally, right, it would have to be like in the $3,000 range, okay? I know I was saying $5,000, but after trying to do a deep vibe, deep dive and researching into it, looking at the community, the community's bullish on it, they're looking at it, but it's just, I don't know, it's not, not what I'm digging. And then especially... Doing a little more digging. So this didn't go through, but this was a proposal from the DCG, which is their Dash Core group. And they had done a proposal to change the block reward, to shift more of the block reward to the master nodes. Okay, so to me, because this core group is running the network, essentially. They're like, for example, like the ETH dev team. Think of it in that sense. So not a fan of this, right? So the initial proposal was for it to be instead of 45, 45, 10, to be 36 to the miners, 54% to the masternodes, 
10% for the team. And as a matter of fact, they were trying to kick it down even more for it to go down to 32%. Okay. So to me, not a big fan that they're not so bullish on the miners, right? Like I, it's one thing I do like about CKB and Kadena that they are committed to the miners. And I see the viewpoints. I see what they're talking about. It's similar to like with Firo, right? I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with that whole situation, but it's their way of trying to control the inflation rate and to lessen the sell pressure. Because like with the master notes, for example, it's kind of looking into it like, okay, maybe it'd be worthwhile to look into this D9 and then, you know, shift though the amount of dash you're getting into a master node until you realize that to do a master node, you need a thousand dash, right? So even at the current price of $54, you would need $54,000 worth of dash to do one of those master nodes in order to get governance votes. And you do get, I think it's like five to 6%, right? So to me, not good looks. This doesn't seem like it went through, but just the fact that their core group was proposing this kind of tells you your viewpoint or their viewpoint of the miners, okay? Hopefully they change their perspective and things have changed because this again was in 2020, so this was almost three years ago, but it is just something to keep in mind, okay? Um, so overall, as I did that deep dive, trying to you know get familiar with the community, just not seeing it, right? I'm not seeing anything to really differentiate themselves from everything else. And yeah, so that's going to have a lot to do with whether you think it's worth it, right? Again, this is just my opinion, but if you're into Dash, seeing something we don't, bullish on it, then it's something to look into. But again, this profitability, the profitability prospect to me isn't worth it at these prices, Maybe at 5k if you're bullish on Dash, but again, for me, for ASIC miners specifically, again, you're going to be stuck with that algo. So the play here is for it to go up, it to move, right? At this point, we're at 50 bucks. If we go by the previous high, 236 bucks. It's only about a 5x, okay? Less than a 5x. Even if we go to the previous high, 443, that's only an 8x from where we're at now, okay? And this guy seems to be getting less and less traction. And the fact that it is a bigger market cap coin, it's ranked number 69, it does take a lot of money for it to move up, okay? So again, if you do see the potential there, if you do think that this was a fluke and it's going to go back up to this, then maybe it's worthwhile. Me doing the research, going into it, kind of getting familiar with the community, not feeling it too much, right? So again, these are all things you gotta research, you gotta think about, don't take, just take my word for it. But again, you have to kind of do these calculations, kind of look at what the profitability looks like now, what it's gonna look like in two years, okay? Again, everything you have to do in preparation for that bull market, take all these things into consideration, okay? Just trying to give you one more thing to think about if you're thinking of doing this, right? So overall, me personally, Unless we get down to 3K, which is very, very unlikely because of that starting price. I could see it going down to like sub 6K. Maybe if we're already at 69, maybe if we continue with this price action, we might go to 5,500. But again, if we pump up, then it's going to go up, right? But again, for me, it'd have to go down to 3K, which I don't think so. So therefore, not really going to be on my horizon. I'm going to keep my eye on it in case we do go down to those levels. But based off of where it's at, it's highly unlikely, right? If anything, I'd rather jump into two E9 Pros rather than this guy, right? So again, just things to take into consideration if you're thinking about getting one because it is high. It is a very high price point, right? And the fact that it's going down already, it's not a good sign. So for those of you who purchased already, probably not the best deal, right? Because it's going to continue to go down, hopefully. All right, guys. So just wanted to give you something to consider. Please comment, like, and subscribe if you're thinking of getting one or if you got one. Let me know in the comments, right? All right, guys. So again, thank you for watching, guys. And I am out.